All right, so red white combo tokens. We have Creature Hoof Behemoth here as a card that was added to the format via Jumpstart that says when this enters the battlefield, creatures you control get plus X plus X until end of turn where X is the number of creatures you control. So, um, you know, if you have three tokens in play, this is going to come into play and it's going to give everything plus three plus three and you're going to attack with an eight eight and then three four fours. And what we're looking to do with this deck that has no green mana to cast this, we've got Indomitable Creativity and Transmogrify here. So we put a bunch of tokens into play, and then these floop a random creature from our deck into play, but it's not so random if Freighter Hoof is the only creature in our deck. And Indomitable Creativity is really pretty powerful in this archetype because this does it X times, so we could destroy two tokens and get two Crater Hoof Behemoths to get two triggers off of them. Uh, something that's kind of sweets it out here too, we've got Chandra Acolyte of Flame, who we really kind of use every bit of this buffalo in this deck. So her, her second zero gives us tokens to transmogrify. And then her minus two lets us recast all these instants and sorceries here. And notable that she says you may cast an instant or sorcery with mana value three or less from your graveyard. So she can actually flash back our copies of Creativity too, should they get counterspelled or discard spelled or something like that. So she's redundancy for our combo piece too, which is nice. One thing that's kind of appealing about playing this archetype is that this deck is not all in on the token, on the combo plan. So, you know, we've got History of Banalia and Legion's Landing and Heroic Reinforcement, and we can just win games by we can just win games by just casting tokens and attacking our opponents to death, which you'll see in the fair matchups, especially you'll have these games where like your opponents like holding up spot removal to like stop you from comboing them. And you're just like putting tokens into play for value and attacking them because they're too afraid to die to your combo. So let's go ahead and dive on into some games here with this and see how it feels today. Thanks for the follows, Pekka and Mega Ants. Yeah, yeah, Heroic Reinforcement's on four with like a one, two, three curve before it can just kill people, especially with History of Badali on three before it. This hand's not amazing, but it's fine. Good range of keepable. Ooh, opponent is also playing a combo deck, so we're having a race here. Opponent's deck, if you haven't seen it before, they cast Emergent Ultimatum with either Mizzix Mastery or by Unburial Racing, the Scholar of the Lost Tropes. And generally speaking, they win the game when they cast it. This is a deck that we have four copies of Rest in Peace in our sideboard for. If they have if they have their combo on four this game, we can't really do anything about it here. Post board, post board will have some counterplay. This is this is a type of matchup where our fair game plan specifically is not good, obviously. Our fair game plan is very slow. And then any any untapped land lets my opponent combo us next turn. As they discarded the scholar here. Ninja, thanks for the follow. So, Vel Unburial writes the Scholar. The Scholar will cost cast the Emergent Ultimatum. The Emergent Ultimatum gets extra turn spells as well as um, Omniscience, and then they just kind of go from there. I guess sometimes they get extra copies of Scholar too. They're technically not deterministic. I don't I don't believe so you have to give them you have to not give them final partings this is double demonic tutor because if you if you give them final parting and scholar they'll cast final parting put another emergent ultimatum this is not deterministic so omniscience does not guarantee them so so a word yeah get ready to go was like need to be extra good because 
it's just mommy with three kids and that's a lot and it's gonna be um like you just gotta help mommy out and play <laughs> and goes can i just be good instead of extra good <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's such a Declan comment. It is such a Declan comment. Can I just be good instead of extra good? I mean, good's a step up for Declan, so. Uh, have fun. Christy. Christy is taking taking the kids to go plant a tree with their with the Cub Scout pack today. Or their their den them and three other families. So we've got four copies of Rest in Peace. Fire Prophecy's not particularly exciting here. Honestly, you probably just leave like one Acolyte of Flame in. It is, it is a nice season to plant you. They were originally going to do it yesterday, but they got, they got rained out. Yep. So when we're mulliganing in these post-board games, we're going to want to be looking for a turn four combo kill of our own or a, um, a rest in peace in our opener. Yeah, their, their deck plays entirely out of the graveyard, Dr. Mister. They either are used, looking to use Mizzix Mastery or Unburial Rights to cheat their things into play. So they are. Their deck, their combo does not work while rest in peace is on the table. So we're looking for either that piece of disruption or a fast combo kill. I think this qualifies. Do I ever miss my long here? I mean, I miss having hair in general. Some some decisions get made for you, though. Oh, I should technically play this on red, right? Is this going to be a second white for us? Even if we brick on our third land next turn, these three attacking will flip the Legion's landing so we can History of Benalia. And then if we find an untapped land next turn, we have our own turn four kill here. So kind of kind of trading linear draws here so far, it's looking like. So any any non valicut land out of our deck lets us transmogrify the history token for lethal. An opponent's got the emergent ultimatum in their bin, so if we don't kill them next turn, you might you might be dead here, champ. If they have Mizix mastery next turn, we probably die. Hey, Talrian, thanks for the 40 months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Yeah, and I mean, honestly, we had, we had a turn five kill without the combo. Now, I don't think my hand was bad. I think I'd keep it again. Sometimes you just don't get there. We had, what, three, three draws to fight, draw fourth land? Again, have to get rid of final parting and give them, give them omniscience and uh, the scholar, and then you probably die. This this technically isn't guaranteed to kill us, but with the combination of cards in their hand and their their graveyard, it's incredibly likely to. Yeah, yeah, we had we had any any untapped land or rest in peace won the game, so. You know, maybe they don't have an extra turn spell in their hands here. He said optimistically. They can also just draw the card we chose not to give them. That, one, that one's deterministic at this point. They'll get a mess of, mess of things that end up taking turns of putting power into play. Morning Gout. What's going on, Hammy?
The power level in historic seems nutty. I don't... So, like... D9, I, I watch D9 is probably the magic streamer I watch the most when I'm offline, and um, he, he summarized it in a really, a really, a really clean way, honestly. Like, I know the last opponent's archetype seems really crazy, because, like, we were at 20 life, and then suddenly they combo killed us, but, like, if you think about it, they didn't do it till turn, they didn't do it till turn four, right? So, like, there's a lot of decks, even in standard, that kill you on turn four. So, like, when you think about what's going on in historic, it's, like, got really novel and neat ways to kill people on turn four. But, like, what is actually happening really isn't that different than, you know, dying on turn four to Embercleave, right? It's, it, you could argue it's more interesting and it's fancier. And honestly, it's easier to have counterplay against a graveyard strategy. And that, that's one of the things that's, you know, kind of sweet about these non-rotating formats is you you get to have those things that are, like, more unique play patterns like that. Yeah, there's no there's no turn one Grishel Brands or Tendrils or something like that. There's no, there's no Rituals and Fastband in this format. Sick. We get to flip Legion's Landing here. And our opponent looking like they're playing Feel Smart Grixis here. So this is probably going to be a game where we grind them as opposed to combo killing them. Hopefully they play a Sweeper next turn and then we end step, raise the alarm, untap, kill them with creativity. Come on, like Castle Languish or something. This'll this will be a matchup where we'll board out most of our combo. Honestly, probably all of it and just turn into a fair tokens deck. Yes, creativity for X's two gets you two tokens. I think I'm just attacking for five here. Maybe I'm supposed to play something so they could have Shark Typhoon here. It's kind of annoying. I think Intangible Root should be going to add to this format. Probably not. I don't know that it really does anything. Oh, okay, sweet. And now that they tapped out inside of combat, I'm going to go ahead and play Chandra Acolyte of Flame. We just flashback dragon fodder here. We just flashback dragon fodder, right? It's better than having a plan. Basically anything. What's going on? Verbal sparring and eat more gnome. The poor gnomes. Saw some YouTube video from an MTG influencer that Prismari Command is one of the top five historic cards from Shrixhaven. It is. 
In fact, I posted a second top five video highlighting the top five archives from that in the format. Morning, Matt. I think, I, I think I'm going to try and do like one of those a week direct to YouTube, short, short content pieces like that. All right, so they're dead. Oh no! Happy right now. I was going to say they're dead, but Shadow's Verdict kills my Chandra. That's so rude. That's so rude. Anyone need a fire started? No? Too bad. I hold on to this in case we draw a thing. Yeah, Danto, a Danto first fort's a really good grinding card in this matchup for sure. I mean, before Strixhaven released, I would have told you Shadow's Verdict was the best sweeper in the format. I don't I don't think it's terrible now. It's less good than it was previously with less Jun sack in the format, but I think Shadow's Verdict is still very reasonable. In fact, the fact that it exiles everything out of the graveyard, too, is a big deal in a lot of matchups. I'm going to play around the counter spell here. I thought rogues made top eight. Oh, wow. Did they just do that main phase? I think you're right. Yeah, it looks like. We're gonna have to get a little creative with our play here, but I think we've got this locked up. Poof, there it is. My friend. Okay, so I think we're just supposed to full board off the combo in a matchup like this. I've got all these Chandras in the sideboard. And I think we like bring in some rest in pieces to cut off their graveyard. And a couple of rip apart to interact with their planeswalkers and their torrential gear hulks. I think is the plan. Yeah, just play the Chandra tribal post board.
Rest in, rest in peace is a very good, very good board card in this format. There's not, not been a lot of pack combo on the ladder. I mean, Historic doesn't have a lot of anything. Historic's got a lot of people playing a lot of different things. It's gotten, it's gotten more diverse post Strixhaven. And it was already pretty diverse pre Strixhaven. Yeah, yeah, if if anything, uh torrential gear hulk control decks are probably the most popular thing I've run into on the ladder. Because regardless of how bad those decks are, people always play them. Historic is easily a top three magic format of all time for me right now. On it honestly might even be number one. It's real, real, real good though to set the bar. Honestly, I think I think there's a really good chance that like historic in general is just like the future of this format. Yeah, GR GRN standards top three for sure. So I think I forbidden friendship again here because flipping Legion's Landing has a lot of upside early in this matchup. And if I Forbidden Friendship, it means they have to have double removal or counter spell plus removal to stop Legion's Landing from flipping. GNS, thank you for the entire year. Let's get you a sword to go with that shit. Welcome back. Thanks for the follows, Rex and Vinny. Good afternoon. Yeah, yeah, we get to we get to cast raise the alarm here at end step two. Du -du -du -du. Nice Crypsis control deck. <laughs> Judge. Remember when heroic reinforcements was the busted top end Agrodex got to play chat in the pre pre Embercleave universe? Yeah, I mean, we were just like good, honest tokens deck there, right? Like that draw in that second game is a good example of why I think boarding out of the, the combo plan is ideal against interactive decks. We're, we're basically like a tokens deck that's playing this combo finish to race the other combo decks in this format. Is the way way to think about it. Man, if we draw any second land, this hand's a banger, huh? We're on the draw. YOLO. Alright, not gonna not gonna be allowed to miss here. Caught with our hand in the cookie jar, chat. That was uh that was the top right pause, by the way.
it's, tech, it's kind of a land. It says land somewhere on the card. Alright, if we had untapped lands here, we get to go Forbidden Friendship flip this. I think we'd have I think we could have won this game if we hit the land there. If we hit land land, we'd have like Forbidden Friendship flipped it and then transmogrified the following turn. This is an Acolyte of Flame out matchup, Lightning Helix in for sure. And again, here I think we want to mostly stay true to the, the main deck plan. Just be a little bit more interactive, cut the Planeswalker that they can run down for a little bit of life game. McNox, thank you for the two years of support. Good afternoon. Howdy, Hayden. I have an online hypergeometric calculator that you'd recommend. Uh, I think the one I usually use is called Stat Trek. Let me see what my browser history says. Yeah, Stat Stat Trek. Dot com has a hypergeo that I default to. That sounds fine. We get to go landing into tap land, second landing into history. If we hit the untapped land on four, we get to transmogrify the second history token and probably kill them on four. Uh, to be fair, it's linked in the YouTube video description, so. Oh, fast lands, chat. We're good to go next turn. Poof, there it is. Some big, some big boys, chat. From the vibe I've been getting from streams and videos, a lot of things seem reasonable in this format. Do I have a personal favorite? Yeah, dead guy, dead guy ale, black white, black white tempo. This is my my personal go-to favorite fair deck in the format. Yeah, it's it's a good one, Jin. I like I like a a fair like a fair game plan A with like a okay combo plan B. I'd encourage you to watch the YouTube video, Garlic, if you have questions on the uh, how to use the Hypergeo calculator. It kind of walks through it all. Uh, the tournament yesterday was effectively single elimination, and I lost round one to a bad matchup. Well, I guess I guess it was effectively double elimination, and I didn't feel like trying to go seven and zero after losing the first round is more more accurate. Creativity needing three red is kind of brutal.
How does Fabled Passage add consistency to how many lands that we have? Can you explain that to me? Because that's not how math works. Probably should have double blocked this last turn. So you're you're saying I should add add a land and that land should be Fabled Passage? I don't know. I feel like you're being pretty results based, right? Like I think if you look at my deck, my deck has like three or four basic planes in it. So like adju adjusting the mana base in this game where I drew all three basic planes. Yeah, there's there's four basic planes, right? So like there there are literally only four lands in my deck that don't make red mana. All right, just as like a general rule, if you're gonna tell me my mana base is wrong, do some math and show me mathematically that it's wrong because I look at the mana base index before I play them. So I think I disagree with you and I think the mana base is fine. I think this game where I drew three of the four basics is a statistical outlier. Feel free to do some math if you wanna show that to not be the case. Show your work. I mean, my mana, I'm human. My mana bases aren't always perfect, but if you're gonna tell me I'm wrong, do the work. This draw actually makes this attack look super innocent. It, 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 we don't necessarily have the deal three here. So if they block with the Questing Beast, we can kill that with the Fire Prophecy, which would be nice. Hey, Rebellion, thanks for the five months. Welcome back. Right, I think we kill this before they kill my token. Oh, we're just dead to Oasis, though, right? Let's see if they see it. Close game. A little unfortunate on the on the mana base, but that's just how it goes sometimes. Questing, questing beast, obviously. One of the better cards the girl that can have against us. It's effectively unblockable. You started swapping out some basics for plateaus. I would definitely, add, I should definitely consider adding some plateaus. That is a strong suggestion. Wellspring. Sacred Boundary Wellspring. Interesting. Won't lie. I'm a pretty great pyromancer. You think they'll use the band archives in an upcoming cube? Yeah, definitely. Is Historic missing any enemy land cycles? Um Yeah, it's missing a couple, right? Rats. Oh wait, we can flash that back with Chandra, right? 
Is that lethal? It's not quite lethal, right? This is actually pretty close to lethal, though. Yeah, but like Legion's Landing isn't being counted in my mana base, right? Like I have 4, 8, 12, 13, 40, 50. I have 16 red. So our odds, our odds of making triple red on exactly turn four are a little bit low. Oh, I have 18 red with Falcon Awakening. I didn't count that one. Yeah, we have, we have 18 red. So like our, our chances of doing it on exactly turn four are a little bit low, but in, in general, but doing it by turn five is fine. Okay, so. You're above 80% to cast on turn five. Yeah, I think that's fine. Think. Bright Star is a sub. There's a good chance they're playing the uh, Pyromancer Arcanus list we played the other day. Is it 19? Maybe I'm off. 8, 12, 7. It is 19. Yeah, I missed the second Clifftop Retreat. Sorry, the... I was using Cardboard Live and their interface is really bad. Do I want to turn into a fair deck here? I have, like, discard spells and stuff. Probably want these rest in pieces too, huh? Maybe I want rip over this Chandra. This being a sweeper for their deck seems good. Kirki, thanks for the follow. Welcome to the channel. Sure, they play Sedgemore Witch 2 Draven. And Chandra, Chandra can minus one to kill kill Pyromancer Jet. We bought him a land here, actually. So I need second white. What matchup do we bring in all four rip? The combo decks that play out of the graveyard? Like Mizzix Mastery. This deck also isn't quite as all in on the graveyard. Like against like a Lurus version of Arcanist, I'd probably bring in all four rips. But like their only graveyard stuff is Dreadhorde Arcanist, basically, and we can also just kill that with spot removal. So it's not nearly as important. Forbidden friendship chat. The world, the world just isn't ready for our friendship chat. I hope you understand. Dealer's choice. <laughs> Would you like this token spell, or this token spell, or this token spell? For those of you taking notes at home, wanting to be the very best magic players you can be, you'll note that I left the best card on top of my deck, insulating it from the, from the discard spell. The Mizzix Mastery deck 
is a deck that elicits strong emotions because it swings games in a big way. So the mastery deck is seems competitive in my experience, but it's by no means overbearing. And it's just one of many reasonable things you can be doing in this format. So you are, you are right that it's not particularly popular and it's not posted strong results in any of the early historic tournaments that we've had post Strixhaven. So it's neat and novel and it's really flashy, but I don't think it's overly powerful by any means. It also seems like the type of deck potentially though that you know like the first MPL weekend that's historic with these Strixhaven cards, like someone in that group of really good magic players could perhaps break it. We've mulliganed to five, but our five is really good. So I'm gonna keep it. Where are you gonna see tournament stats for historic? MTG Melee is the premier tournament, tournament arena, arena site. There's also a Twitter account, MTG underscore data on Twitter. We'll, uh, we'll give you lots of good stats from the previous weekend's events. B-Dog and Freddy, thanks for the follows. Thalia is very good against us here. I assume we're going to lose creativity. Really? Okay, maybe they have another one? Or they have like a redeem? Yeah, it makes sense. for green mana. Yeah, something like that. All right, I think we're solidly locked out at this point, right? Chandra has a hard time staying alive here because they played the board so well. Um, do we board out like some of the combo? I guess I have ways to kill their Thalias and Redeems post boards. Maybe it's fine. They don't have a ton of spot removal. You think, I think I'd rather have the combo than something like Heroic Reinforcements, honestly, because they play to the board so well. It seems like it probably is a hard time getting through. Let's see. Let's do that. Let's board in the spot removal for their, their hate bears and then try and lean on the combo for lethal. Hey, Windswept Teeth. Thank you for the 14 months. Appropriate that you resub while we get while we're getting beaten down by the Green White Company deck. Speaking, speaking of historic tournament results. This green-white company deck that we're currently playing against has been one of the better performing archetypes early on in this format. Uh, Grawl, Aggro, green-white company, and uh, blue-black rogues have been the three decks that have put, been putting up the most consistent results so far in the few early tournaments that we've had. So your argument for chance to miss a land drop on turn four ignores the fact that we have legions landing that can be a land on occasion, and it ignores the fact that fire prophecy lets us see extra cards. Also, how many lands are we on? Are you are you counting the fact that I have two Valakuts in my deck too? It feels like you're not counting the fact that I have Valakuts in my deck. I didn't I didn't count count offhand for you. We have do we have 23 including the two Valakuts?
ahead and rip Thalia apart here. They uh, learned from history if they're doomed to repeat it. So I used the term garbage time yesterday in the context of D&D, &D, and I think it works well for a statement between the part of combat where the conclusion is foregone. Yeah, that's exactly, exactly true. Zimbalsad, thanks for the follow. Welcome to the channel. More insane romancy. Oh, right, they had two, to two things in there. Sweet looking. Get this flipped over. It'll give us something to do with our mana. I dead in the air next turn? Wow, we're exactly dead in the air next turn. That's brutal, super close. Their life gain from the scavenging ooze coming in clutch here. Oh no, wait, they're jumping with the Luminarch. Let's see if they figure it out. They should jump with the Land War Elves because the Luminarch counter puts us exactly dead in the air with the Hepshed Oasis. Blocking with the Aspirants of Puntier. Yeah, looks like they're figuring it out. Yeah, good catch by the opponent here. Let's show the tip on Super Lee. Welcome back. Yeah, really close game. There's her watching the stream and heard the line. Very possible. I don't know. I always assume if someone... I think ghosting happens a lot less frequently than most people assume. And if someone, like, really needs a match win that so badly that they need to ghost, like, their life's probably in a spot where they, they can take it. The most important thing in their life is uh, getting a match win off a random streamer on Twitch. Like, more power to them. Do you played Forbidden Friendship, and I would have been able to attack with one more creature if they lived at one. Um, maybe I didn't. I didn't count, but the blocking permutations end up looking like that way. You might be. You might be right that the Forbidden Friendship meant we had lethal there. I don't think Showdown of the Skulls really solves any problems that we have patronizing purpose. Like, I don't think this deck has a very bad, has a very bad control matchup, which is like where you want that style of effect at. Sure, not lethal, but it prevented lethal on the backswing is correct. 
And then, then it probably turns into lethal because we killed him the following turn. So we have a hoof and hand tier, but Fire Prophecy lets us shift it to the bottom. Zan did the historic 5k yesterday with Teamer Phoenix. This variation seems good. It plays Abundant Harvest and uh, I think Clothis and Lovestruck Beast among some other green cards. The green, green splash gives you the ability to take problem permanence like uh, Rest in Peace off the table. That will likely be boarding in here, for example. I have a link to that specific list. Yeah, go to MTG Melee. Hey, click, click Historic Ducklist. It's so weird to me, like, is this just like what your Google search found? Why link to the tournament thing on a third party website as opposed to just like linking to it on Melee? Is Luca too expensive for this deck? I give you a second to read the card rec command. Lego. Good night, dear Lich. Woof, day it is. <laughs> Crunch. All right, so. Chandra's kind of my go-to trim against anything that's not controlling. Things that play to the board can kill her. I'm also boarding in Rest in Peace here, so she can't flash things back if I'm boarding in Rest in Peace. Um, Fire Prophecy was okay there for putting this back into my deck, but in general, this effect's not very good in this matchup. Doesn't have too many things that they kill. I'm just going to board in for Rest in Peace and stay true to the rest of the plan here. I could be right to board in Chandra Torch and Defiance for killing Crackling Drakes, but... Eh. Let's try this. They have a lot of interaction for this post-board game. I might pull the combo out and try and play more of a fair tokens plan. If they if they slow themselves down to try and disrupt us, we will slow ourselves down to match them in a fair game plan. I'm gonna leave leave the combo in for game two here while we're on the draw. Well, creativity, like that game you just watched there, it can get two Crater Hoofs, and two Crater Hoofs is lethal from spots that one Crater Hoof isn't lethal. And Dominable Creativity, while being harder to cast, also can target multiple things in case your opponent has spot removal for the things you're targeting. Also, this card isn't strictly more expensive than Transmogrify. This card can be cast for X's one, just targeting one thing. 
So it's a little bit more restrictive in the color requirements that it has, but it can just be a four mana card like Transmogrify when that's the full. While also, while also having upside in a lot of corner key situations. Sure, uh, Electrolyze is legal from the Mystical Archives. But that, that's not, uh, it's not a card that really sees play. Yeah, I'm supposed to mulligan this because as a creator hoof in the opener. These two, two Dorkos have been glued to our starting hand so far. Uh, could be a game where we get uh, reinforcements for a couple here. And our land drops here looks good. But the opponent's got things like Flame Sweep post board. Did Zan was Zan playing Flame Sweep? I don't take a peek at me with his, his sideboard. There were two copies of Sweltering Suns in the deck that Zan played. If they tap out here, Heroic Reinforcements is an attack for 12 next turn. Indomitable Creativity puts a Hoof into play, and then the Hoof gives plus four, plus four, and that's lethal. Large, good afternoon. The family, the family is doing swell. So, if they had a Sweltering Suns, I don't think they would have played this out. There were two Aether Gusts and a Disdainful Stroke and two Negates in Sand Sideboard and some Memory Lapses in the main. No attack here. Nah, I've knocked Garlic, and I don't think I'm going to. Standard's been really bland the last two times we played it. I don't think I'm going to be touching that format until rotation happens. We played we played Black White Clerics this morning, and just like the format, there's just no variety in what other people are playing in it. Like, it gets really dry playing against Eldraine Block Constructed every, every match. There's plenty, plenty of sweet things to play in Historic. Maybe, maybe if Historic Sours at some point we'll revisit, but the last, the, la the two standard decks I've played, they just haven't felt very compelling. And obviously I haven't seen how today's upload's going to go, but when we did the first standard deck that we played in this format, I uploaded one standard video and four Historic videos to my YouTube channel that same day, and the standard video did worse than all four Historic videos did. 
which is like, you know, so at least in terms of my audience, I don't know if that applies to Magic Arena as a whole, but in terms of people that consume my content, Standard is really not popular in comparison to Historic. Yeah, yeah, I agree, J JWP. That's the that's the big issue. Like, it's just it feels very seamsy, and like even like like the blue red dragon deck that someone was talking about. Like, it's a bone crusher giant brazen borrower deck, and like it's kind of got interesting things at the top end that it's doing, but like it's still at the core just just more more of the same L train. Come on, just tap out so I can creativity you. So this isn't lethal. Do we do this again or do we do we YOLO the creativity? I kind of want to YOLO the creativity, huh? Hey, Chloe, thanks for the sub gift. Yeah, yeah, I think I think the adventure the adventure cards are sweet, but <laughs> no, no problems with Twitch staff posting in chat. They're more Twitch staff are more. We mostly have sub chat on to thin, thin the herd of some of the less well-behaved people. Why two here instead of one? Because if they kill one of my targets in response, like this, now I still get a Crater Huff. And this is, this is why, you know, someone was asking, why are we playing creativity? more creativities than transmogrifies, that's why, right? Like, if that's a transmogrify, they kill the thing I'm targeting in response. And then I don't get anything, whereas here, we can play through the spot removal spell. And I'm getting for the exact Cs. Hello, thanks for the follow, good afternoon. Think they should speed up rotations and standard or is an outlier though? I think rotations should be faster in standard. Let me let me rephrase. I think rotations in standard should be more consistent. I think it's incredibly silly that sets like Eldrain are legal for 24 months and some other sets are only legal for 15 months. So I think if Wizards wants some sets to be legal for 24, they should probably have 24 be closer to the average. Yeah, they could make rotations happen more frequently, but not make them happen faster. So I would, I don't think they have to make it happen faster, but I would like it if there were two rotations per year. So all sets were either 21 or 24 months legal. If you, if you think about it, how Magic's rotation works right now, yeah, I think a rolling rotation would work too. You could just say standard is always the last eight sets or last seven sets. The, the complaint when they tried faster rotations was that people's cards are legal for less time. And while that's only true for half the sets, it was a kind of valid complaint from a finance perspective. So I think if they wanted to appeal to those people, they should just make it so, they should just make it so all sets are legal for 24 months rolling. And then you give people more value out of their stuff. Okay, so Blood Sun. So they're just guy control. So I think because of the odds of a sweeper happening next turn, I want a Chandra here as opposed to history. I don't know. If you're someone who's constrained on time and money, playing standard is a stupid thing to be doing regardless, in my opinion. Standard standard has always been a spew and will always be a spew. 
And, I, and honestly, I talked about this a little bit on stream before, but I really think Historic is probably the future of Magic Arena for, for a lot of people, myself included, honestly. You know, we talk about, you know, the Magic Arena economy is far from perfect. And a non-rotating format like Historic gets around the failings of the Magic Arena economy for a lot of people. Because, you know, like, take Grohl, for example. You know, we just had this very powerful injection of cards into this format, and Grohl is still a top-tier deck, right? So, like, even though it's a little bit more expensive to, or longer to grind, or however you're getting your deck to get your first Historic deck, Historic is going to get to a point where the power level stabilizes and levels off and new players will be able to get a Historic deck and know that that deck's going to be playable a year from now, two years from now, five years from now. So from an economic perspective, it will make sense for a lot of people to have this be the format that they get into. You know what? because you'll be able to know that once you pick something up, it doesn't have a shelf life, it doesn't expire. Okay, so they're dead. Combo! <laughs> Listen, Chad, is there anything more satisfying than killing Gandalf? I'm not, I'm not sure that there is. I'm not, I'm not sure that there is. All right, and after we combo kill them here, if you didn't see us play against a control deck earlier, we actually board out our entire combo here. And we bring in Chandra, Chandra, some rip aparts, a couple of rest in pieces, or probably a gear hulk deck. Should have killed Def to send a message. <laughs> there, there are a lot of, speaking of wild cards, there are a lot of sweet different combo decks you can play with creativity in this format. This card, this card enables lots of silly things. I think the culture in the magic community surrounding bands is incredibly toxic and bad for the game. There's a lot of people who like to act like it's a failure every time Wizards has to ban a card in a format, and I think that's just very silly. You look at all these other digital-only games that, like, frequently get to rebalance their cards. Hearthstone, Runeterra, Mythgard. These games get to do that all the time. In my opinion... Wizards failing from the ban perspective is that they tend to not ban things quick enough. They tend to be very reactive with their bannings as opposed to being proactive with them. So I think their timing tends to suck, but there's this really toxic, toxic attitude of, oh, they failed because they had to ban something. Like, I don't mind when they have to ban something. I just wish that, like, I wouldn't have to wait eight months for it to happen. Like, I shouldn't have to wait for it to be three months before rotation for Tefri Time Raveler to GTFO standard, right? All right, so do we play into a counter spell or do we just end step raise? I think we just end step raise the alarm here as opposed to playing into their mana. Yeah, and honestly, like, that's that's the right attitude, right? Innovation requires failure. If you're not failing on occasion, you're not pushing the envelope and, and innovating consistently. If you've if you've never failed, you've never really tried. Thanks for the follows, Ankit and Valian. And like you know, I'm sick of Eldraine 2 at this point, but I also think it's worth pointing out that, like, the adventure cards are kind of an awesome design, right? Like, I think I think the adventure cards are super sweet. If 
Feels like we're getting swept next turn, so I'm just gonna go ahead and play rest in peace. The numbers, the numbers were a miss on most of the adventure cards, but like, you know, I wouldn't call them bad designs. Mr. Gray and Andrew Whoopo, thanks for the, thanks for the follows. Just a timely. All right, do you have another veto? You do not. Du -du -du -du. All right, so the fact that they just jumped that out implies they're about to sweep my board, which is sad, but not the end of the world. Or are we about to get Gear Hulk? Because they, they vetoed the rip, so I bet we're about to get Gear Hulk then. This does four damage divided, so that probably kills us. Yeah, yeah, the adventure creatures are like number adjustments away from being fine. They're gonna murder four tokens and tap two of our lands here. Thanks for the 30 months, Serenade. Pretty rude. Huh. Have another gear hulk here. Might be a little late. They've got a lot of pressure here. Sorry, I'm late. No time for a break. I think we trade a two two for their three two and then go to six. Zero, zero mana death free is pretty good. If you haven't heard of me, then get ready to meet my flames. I think we just put an emblem on them, huh? Venethrax, thanks for the 15 months. Welcome back. Could be right to kill Tefri too. Oh, looks like someone's getting a little sweaty. Can I get a little sweaty with Chandra opponent? More in a mirror. Oh, sweet. I 
do I value nuking their graveyard enough to bring in a third rest in peace? Yeah, probably. Honestly, it's probably better than the rip apart sign. We'll go four of these in one of these. Their deck, their deck doesn't really seem like it has has the ability to keep up with us without Gear Hulk. See, it really needs a two drop next turn, but. Uh, we've boarded our combo kill out in the control matchup, but you polymorph into Crater of Behemoth. You can always see the deck list by typing exclamation point deck in chat. Or by finding it linked below the stream if you can't type in chat. Should also be on the on screen overlay. Not the not the two mana spell I wanted for Christmas, fortunately. And I'm right on time. Welcome to the party. I'm gonna try Chandra here because if she resolves, Legion's Landing gets to flip. Feels like a win for me. Chandra Nalar, Pyromancer Extraordinaire. Say hi to my fiery friends. So next turn, we can go Friendship, Chandra Tokens, Flip, Landing, Cast History. Won't lie. I'm a pretty great pyromancer. Well then. <laughs> Just Magic Arena things. I didn't drop any frames, right? Yeah, that was all Magic Arena. Good. Got it good. Game was edited for broadcast. Yeah, should we check and make sure are all the cards the same? Was Wizard stacking the deck against us? What's going, what's going on here? Oh, you know what? This was a mistake. I should have recast the Forbidden Friendship, right? Flash that back with her. When your opponent sweeps the board and then you untap and attack them for 12 or whatever. Feels good, man. Hey, Scott. Thank you for the Prime support. There's a ton of great people you can send that to every single month here on Twitch. Thanks for sending it this way this month. All right. So let's go Elementals. And then Dragon Fodder, and then I'm pretty sure Heroic Reinforcements beats most of their stuff here. I guess they could technically have settled the wreckage, but... This is still lethal through that, right? Because it gives these, these haste. Nice. Sick. Yeah, they had a really, really good... Really good range of games with this deck, honestly. I like to end on high notes, so I think this feels like we've been going for, for 80 minutes, so I think I'm gonna go ahead, go ahead and wrap on this one, but I like I like what this deck was doing. It felt it felt pretty pretty reasonable overall. I felt like we had pretty pretty decent game plans in a lot of spots. We have to kind of highlight the range of what this deck can do. You know, we had the kind of fair tokeny beatdown plan like we had in that last game there. And then we also got to see, you know, the games were like turn four, turn five. We flooped a couple of crater hoofs into play and ran, ran the opponent down. So like I mentioned, you know, this deck is basically trying to be a fair deck first and you have this Crater Hoof Transmogrify Indomitable Creativity plan for when your honest token plan isn't going to be quick enough to, to run the opponent down. And you know, and in the post board games, when that plan is not what you want to be doing, we get these powerful planeswalkers to kind of kind of shift gears. Although Chandra Acolyte of Flame 
was kind of kind of did a lot of heavy lifting there. I wonder, I wonder if I want a third copy of her in the sideboard as opposed to maybe maybe I do two of each of these bigger Chandras and a third one of her because she was really good in all of our all of our control matchups for sure. Great, you're going. 